Madam President and Vice Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure and privilege to present our honorary doctoral candidate, Michael McCain. Michael McCain is a transformational business leader who is known around the world for his transparent, honest, and authentic approach to leadership. Michael McCain is President and CEO of Maple Leaf Foods. He is a Director of McCain Capital, Incorporated, McCain Foods, Maple Leaf Foods, and the Royal Bank of Canada. He is a member of the Ivy Business School Advisory Board and the Center for Addiction and Mental Health Foundation, where he is a passionate advocate for transparency and action on mental health issues. He has five children and resides in Toronto. Mr. McCain was born in Florenceville, New Brunswick to Wallace and Margaret McCain. His father, Wallace, was co-founder of McCain Foods and his mother, Margaret, the first woman to serve as Lieutenant Governor of the province of New Brunswick. He was educated at Mount Allison University and the University of Western Ontario in business administration. Mr. McCain spent the first 16 years of his career at McCain Foods, where he started in sales and advanced to management positions in sales, marketing, and information systems. In 1986, he became the president of McCain Citrus Incorporated and was appointed president and CEO of McCain Foods USA in 1990. In 1995, Michael McCain joined Maple Leaf Foods as president and chief operating officer. Four years later, he was appointed president and CEO. Mr. McCain and his team have led the transformation of Maple Leaf Foods into a leading consumer packaged food company with operations in Canada, the US, United Kingdom, Asia, Mexico, and with annual sales of more than 4.4 billion. With approximately 19,500 employees, Maple Leaf Foods is as mired for its strong value-based corporate culture, which fuels morale, performance, and innovation. In 2008, when a public health tragedy was linked to a listeriosis outbreak at one of its plants, the company faced its greatest crisis and challenge in its history. As president and CEO, Michael McCain took immediately responsibility and action. His leadership in addressing the crisis was marked by accountability, transparency, authenticity, and open communication. The company's response to the crisis and the steps that followed to reinforce its commitment to food safety, which included the appointment of a chief food safety officer, helped restore consumer confidence quickly. Maple Leaf Foods' transparent and ethical response to the serious crisis has become a model for companies around the world in the 21st century and a case study in ethical crisis management taught in business schools around the world. Mr. McCain has described the immediate response to the crisis as follows. It was simply doing what was right, and doing what was right came directly from the company's ingrained values. This is not about some contrived strategy. It's just about a tragic situation and an organization's desire to make it right. The core principle here was to first do what's in the interest of public health, and second, to be open and transparent in taking accountability. For the team, this was almost not a decision. It was obvious. It's just what we are. Under his leadership, Maple, Foods, Maple Leaf Foods exemplifies the strength that comes with a corporate culture based on str a strong set of shared values. These values are reflected in Maple Leaf Foods' six corporate leadership values. Do what's right, deliver winning results, build collaborative teams, get things done in a fact-based and disciplined way, learn and grow inwardly and outwardly, and perhaps most tellingly, dare to be transparent, passionate, and humble. Mr. Chancellor, in recognition of his leadership in economic development and exemplary va values-based entrepreneurship, I request that you confer the degree of Doctor of Laws honoris causa upon Michael McCain. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Governors, 
and upon recommendation of the University Senate, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa. Congratulations. Thank you uh, for those uh, <clears throat> kind words this morning. Mr. Chancellor, Chair of the Board, Madam President, graduands, and honored guests, I want to first thank you for inviting me here today and for this tremendous honor. I am, to say the least, humbled to receive this recognition from one of Canada's greatest and best known and respected institutions, Carleton University. I'm even more proud to say that I have an opportunity to graduate, if that's what the right reference is, with each and every one of you, such a vibrant and inspired group of Canada's future leaders. I'd like to thank you for allowing me to join you uh, in this special occasion. Uh, today certainly marks an exciting and important milestone for each of you and for your families. I certainly feel privileged to share in that with you here this morning. I've struggled a bit with uh, what to say here today. Uh, naturally, I feel this obligation to leave you with something of a message that you might believe is meaningful and one that might even meet the higher test of memorable. I'm acutely aware of what is now a widely known fact that when you think back on your time at Carleton University and this celebration, you'll remember all the great times through your four or more years here but I'm sure there's one thing that you won't remember, just like in my case 35 years ago. What you won't remember is what I have to say today or he, who it was who even spoke to you. So I'm totally cool with that. I accept that. <laughs> but I'm going to try and overcome the odds nonetheless. I was thinking maybe of starting by giving you in my short time a David Letterman-style list of pearls of wisdom from my aging experience, maybe something like the top 10 tips to win the corner office, <laughs> or the five top ways to succeed after school, but I concluded that that would never work. So I decided to go the other way and focus on just one thing. One thing, one thought, one idea and one word, which I believe now 35 years out of the chair that you're sitting in right now, that might add value to your life going forward, and maybe, just maybe, you have an outside shot at remembering. So that one thing, that one word, is gratitude. Gratitude. It sounds simple, almost Pollyannish in some ways, but it's certainly not. You might feel that actually you understand gratitude, but do you really understand it? Have you thought about the idea, the emotion in careful terms? I would say that gratitude is a life skill and a life skill that, in my experience, will prove utterly invaluable to you. And like all things worthwhile, it can take years, even decades, to develop. My counsel to you today would be to make your own personal commitment to development of this skill starting today. Let me explain a little bit more. Gratitude should be considered the mother of all emotions. We, you, 
live in a world of opportunity, a world of challenge, obstacle, and hopefully reward. It's a very complex, complex place that you're entering. No matter where life takes you, you can count on this. It's going to get considerably more complex for you than it is today. When you face this complexity, it's only natural, only human, to focus on the bad stuff internally and externally. But I want you to know, and this has taken me personally a lot of years to appreciate, that we directly own how we behave and how we feel. You should have the discipline, and it takes discipline, and the good sense to pause first, no matter what you face, and then be grateful. Grateful for something, grateful for anything. It will help you through the bad days and the good days. Gratitude is a healing and rewarding emotion. It's something you give and you get back in return. It can define your aura for all things big and small, day in and day out, be grateful. You'll find the consequences on your life will be astonishing and astonishingly positive. It will make you a happier person. It will make you a more resilient person. It will make you a better person and people will appreciate you more. Today, you have much to be grateful for, but there will always be much, much more. So to the class of 2014, in the years to come, I doubt you will remember my presence here today, but I do hope that you will remember this one word and the enormous role it can play in your life, gratitude. Make that a learning journey and it will be extraordinary. Thank you and congratulations to each and every one of you.